Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com. We have a new build of Windows 10 Redstone to look at, or anniversary update as it's going to be called. This is 14342, at least slightly early by Microsoft. I think it was due actually to be released today, 11th of May 2016, but they released it overnight on the 10th. I think that was a bit of a slip up. But anyway, here is the build. And a huge amount of change in this. I was really pleased with the previous build which was pretty stable so I'll go through some of the changes in this build and, uh, and what some of the fixes are as well so this is 14342 the main changes seem to be Microsoft Edge so um, extensions are no lo lo longer loaded from a local folder on the PC as they were previously they're now through the Windows Store so if you want extensions you're gonna have to go through the store to get them which is good because that's where um, that's where extensions are and here is an example of a new extension this is the ad, uh, block plus if I turn that on that blocks ads on websites and um, it actually says there one of your extensions is corrupted we try to fix it but now extensions are available directly from the Windows Store so here you go you can see the the uh, extensions that are available in the store I've got that one installed and if I wanted to say the translation one, well, I can open that up here in the store and install it like that. So these are some of the extensions you can now get: Page Analyzer, um, or Reddit, and gest Mouse Gestures. You've, I've, I've demonstrated some of these on previous videos, but these are now available directly in the store, which is which is pretty good. This is where you want them. So that's one of the changes. Um, there is a bug as well, if you turn off ex an extension, it can cause problems with uh, Microsoft Edge, so you better to uninstall it rather than uh, turn it off, but that's just a temporary bug. You now get real-time notifications from Microsoft Edge, so um, that's where Edge can push notifications through to Action Center up here. Um, so you see we've got these updates, um, notifications here, the, the web can push those through as well. Microsoft say when examples is Skype for web, so you get a notification and it'll come through in in Action Center over here. In fact, there you go, let Skype show notifications, yes we will. And we'll see if any pop up while, uh, while I'm working away on this video. Something else we've got is swipe navigation in Edge, which is uh, something that I've wanted to see right back from the, when we had Windows 8.1. I did like that, and that's gone in the recent builds, or if that's been gone since Windows 10, I should say. Um, so you can now swipe anywhere, so I can go back, so I can demonstrate this. You can see that? Swipe back and that will go back so that is a really good example of the of a swipe navigation and uh, I do like that and it, yeah in desktop mode maybe it doesn't you don't really use it that much but tablet mode you definitely are so that is a really good feature there are some uh, uh, you've been to fixes and changes um, in that uh, in this build as well I'll, I won't really go into those on here but um, have a look at the release notes for that Skype has been updated the Skype Universal Preview app with this new release you get the option of setting a dark theme um, in the app and they are fixed on books and things like that. And you can also switch between Skype accounts which is really useful. If you couldn't do that before it was just the, the sort of default Windows account or the default sign, the account that you signed into. So that is good as well. So that's, that's new in the Skype app. Other changes include, um, you notice down here at the bottom there, the camera will really pick that up, but the uh, workspace ink icon has gone from a pen with a pen to a little squiggle on it. It looks more like the other ones, the other apps as well. So I think that's uh, a good design as well. If you, uh, another visual change, if you're in dark mode, the UAC prompt now supports dark mode, which is quite nice. Something I can't show you on here because on this surface you've only got two mouse buttons but you can do a middle click if you've got a three mouse button de uh, device, middle click with your mouse button and it clears all the notifications. So this fixes quite a lot of 
uh, bugs that were in the previous build, particularly the ones that uh, were interesting, was it, um, apps that have been converted, for, for desktop apps that are converted for the Windows Store using Project Centennial will now run, which is good. And the other one that might have affected uh, a lot of Windows users is a DRM issue that was causing Groove Music, uh, Movies and TV, Netflix and other apps not working correctly and have to do an app reset to get them to work. That has been fixed on here now, so that's really good. They fixed uh, audio crashes when you're using a receiver, when you're using HDMI or Dolby Live Digital DTS Connect. Uh, they said they've polished the animations where involving Cortana on the lock screen. Let's have a look. Actually, Cortana is not showing up on the lock screen there. Maybe we need to reset that. So Cortana now shows up, uh, they said they improved the animation for Cortana on the lock screen, which is normally here, but it's not doing that. And for some reason Cortana isn't playing on this machine at the moment. The internet is working, but Cortana isn't. So a restart will probably fix that one. There's a lot of other changes in it as well, lots of polish and um, nice fixes in there. So I'll, I'll let you have a look at those if you uh, have a look at the links on the digitallifestyle.com. Some of the known issues, it says the feedback hub may take about 20 or 30 minute to update from start. Uh, semantic, uh, not an antivirus, not an internet security, are causing the PC to blue screen. Uh, not really a big fan of those apps. Anyway, the QQ app from Tencent crashes and they're working on a fix on that and they're fixing non-English keyboard and bash prompts. Um, they also say they're investigating an issue where inside a preview builds of certain language, the all apps list on the start appears empty and you may see square boxes in certain apps when using new emojis. But apart from that, there's not a huge amount of changes, uh, of, uh, of known issues I should say. So there's not a, a lot to have to worry about with this build, maybe apart from Cortana, no, not working on there. One thing that they have uh, taken out of this build is the Wi-Fi sense feature allows you to share contacts, uh, Wi-Fi con networks between contacts, so you wouldn't have to give them the password, it could be done through your contacts. They've taken that out and they said it's because not many people use it and I suspect a lot of people were worried about security on that as well, so that's been that's been taken out. So that's all the changes in this build. Here I've, I've enabled that app uh, plus uh, extension as well, if you're going to uh, Extensions, you see I've got that enabled on here and in the settings you can control a lot of the options including showing the the button there so that when you go on a site with adverts maybe like this one, let's try this one I tried this yesterday, it had the number of ads blocked on there it's not doing that currently so maybe that's just because it's been restarted and it's going to kick in shortly. Anyway, so that's that's the build. You can find the details on the digitallifestyle.com. Hopefully we'll get a mobile build soon as well, but uh, so far these redstone builds, the anniversary update uh, is looking really good and uh, I've been really impressed with uh, Windows 10 redstone builds. Thanks for watching this video. More on the digitallifestyle.com.